Good morning slash afternoon, everybody. Uh, as Christina said, my name is Kendra Barnhart. I am currently located in the Chambersburg office. Uh, I came to SEK in 2021. However, I've been working with QuickBooks in the private sector for many years. Um, so we will, uh, I want to get started with a shameless plug uh, for some upcoming uh, group events and webinars that we have. Um, uh, we have a user group for both QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online coming up on September the 25th. Uh, that will be an in-person event um, in September. Uh, hold on just a second, I think. Here we go. Uh, we do have that coming up on September the 25th. That is going to be in-person in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, we do have more information coming uh, about that here as time gets closer. We are also going to have a virtual webinar uh, going over all things year end. So 1099s, W2s, um, anything and everything you could uh, want to know about how to process your year end information at QuickBooks um, webinars and user groups. Uh, now let me try to share my screen. Here we go. Um, so we did ask everybody if they had anything specific that they wanted to go over during our time here today. Um, so I will hit most of those topics, I believe. Um, I do want to get started with just some overall information. Is my screen still being shared? The blue line went away. You're not sharing your screen, no. Okay, are we now? Yes, I see okay. Craig's design and landscaping. All right, sorry. <laughs> I guess I forgot to hit the extra share button there. Um, as I was saying, I did want to kind of go over just a general overview of QuickBooks Online to get us started. Um, in the past, QuickBooks Online has not been ideal for every business out there. Um, I will say in the last year to two, they have made leaps and bounds in being a more well-rounded software. Um, a lot of people think that just because it shares the name of Intuit or QuickBooks, that QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online are similar in their features. And that is unfortunately not the case. Um, it's actually essentially two different businesses. Um, so while they are very similar, there are a lot of differences between the two softwares. Uh, because of that, uh, one of the first questions that I saw was about conversions. Um, so I do want to start there. Um, QuickBooks Desktop is eventually going to go away. It is not to that point as of yet. Uh, there is no sunset date for the software. Uh, it is to the point now where you cannot purchase it new. Uh, so as long as you have an existing subscription, you can continue to move forward with the years and the latest and greatest of QuickBooks desktop software. Um, however, if you were starting up a new business, you would not be able to purchase it as a new entity. Uh, they are going to keep QuickBooks Enterprise, which is a uh, more robust version of QuickBooks desktop. Uh, they are starting to work uh, with a lot of companies. Like, for example, now with Enterprise, once you reach a certain level, your payroll is included. Uh, so it is, they are working uh, with some of these smaller companies to make it more cost efficient. So we're very grateful for that. Um, one of the biggest things that we do like to warn our clients about, especially uh, the local governments um, and any sort of business that has multiple company files. So for example, if you have a highway fund in one QuickBooks desktop file, if you have your ARPA funds um, in multiple different company files, that does not translate well into QuickBooks Online. So for example, if you do have three different company files under your QuickBooks desktop subscription, you would have to purchase three QuickBooks Online subscriptions. Um, so that is kind of where it gets quite complicated whenever you're moving from desktop to online. 
in that aspect. Um, so what we are advising our clients now to do is to move into the QuickBooks Enterprise because you can keep maintain those multiple company files under one subscription if you switch to Enterprise. Um, so let's say you do decide that you want to convert, you're done with QuickBooks Desktop, you just want to go ahead and uh, bite the inevitable bullet. Um, QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Enterprise is very seamless. Um, the only thing that is essentially going to change is the uh, writings in the blue menu bar at the top. It's just no longer going to say Desktop. It'll say Enterprise. Um, moving to QuickBooks Online, though, is a very different ballgame. Um, Intuit does offer the service for free uh, for you to transition from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online. Um, that does only come with the advanced option. Um, and that is primarily what a lot of your governments and nonprofits are going to have to uh, convert to simply because of budgeting aspects uh, your reporting, everything like that. The, the smaller versions are more geared to your small businesses that don't have a lot of um, like the auditing features and everything like that that you guys are required to have. And that can be a conversation we have. Um, it's kind of complex to go over in a group setting like this. Um, but uh, my information is obviously available on the slide deck that you'll receive here. Uh, all that being said, if you do decide to convert from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online, that is a service that SCK offers. Um, you, we do not have to be doing your audit. We don't have to be doing any other existing um, engagements with you. This is a, another service that we are offering um, to clients. Uh, the reason that we suggest having either ourselves or somebody else with QuickBooks experience doing that is while Intuit is a fantastic software company, sometimes they're not the best with customer service um, or with follow-up and general accounting uh, software. Uh, one of the horror stories I tell is I was reviewing books from somebody uh, for year-end work and found a expense account that was just conversion expenses and essentially Intuit didn't know what to do with the $10,000 discrepancy and just put it into an expense account. Uh, so that would obviously cause some problems um, moving forward. Uh, so again, if you're interested in making a conversion, you can certainly reach out uh, to myself or to any of your local offices there and we can get that process started. Uh, something else that I wanted to um, go over today that I saw a lot of questions about and I continue to get a lot of questions about is just a general overview of the software. So this here is obviously a sample company that QuickBooks Intuit will allow you to review. Uh, one of the main differences between desktop and online is that your menu bar is over here on the left hand side versus up top. Um, and it's kind of worded a little differently. So for example, all of your banking information is under transactions. Um, I think QuickBooks Online is trying to make it simpler and not necessarily looking at the uh, shared language between QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online, which is where we go back into the desktop and online being two different softwares, two different companies within Intuit. Uh, one of the perks of QuickBooks Online that I like and is, I think, one of the best selling points that they have is this bank transactions window. What this does is it hooks up with your online banking for either your um, actual physical bank or credit cards. Uh, what I like to tell a lot of, especially of our small businesses, is if you hook up your credit cards, you no longer have to chase down receipts. This information is coming over directly from the bank or directly from the credit card uh, website rather. And you can go in and actually see and categorize the information uh, right in this screen. So for example, on 624, one of the employees went to Bob's Burger. You can apply your expense account directly to this transaction 
and hit add and it's automatically added into your um into that expense account um it gives you what your bank balance is and compared to what you have currently recorded in quickbooks so ideally whenever you add all of these transactions your bank balance and quickbook balance should match uh, this is great for those uh, like I said, those hard to manage employees who aren't the best at turning in their receipts. Um, it keeps you up to date on obviously your financials. Um, makes sure all of your expenses are recorded as quickly as possible. Uh, you can either wait for them to update automatically at the end of the day, or you can go in and update them at any point up here. Um, Something else that I appreciate in QuickBooks Online is their reporting section, which is ironically one of the things I didn't like a couple years ago. They have grown leaps and bounds with this. Um, and something that I think a lot of our um, attendees today would appreciate is over here with the management report. So I'll get into that here in a second. Uh, looking here at these top three um, options under the reports is standard, uh, which means this here shows every report available um, in QuickBooks Online. Um, as I mentioned before, there are different levels of QuickBooks Online subscriptions. And with those different levels comes different levels of reports. Uh, this here is a smaller version of QuickBooks Online. So they unfortunately do not have any budgeting reports as you cannot go in and do a budget. It's here, but as you can tell, there's no arrow, which means it's not available. Um, so looking down through here, obviously there's a plethora of reports. On the standard window, what you can do is you can go in and you can favorite reports and they will show up here at the very top of the screen. These favorites are user specific. So you can go in and favorite whichever reports you want to. If you have um, a bookkeeper who looks at certain other aspects or um, anybody, you know, obviously if you have a sales manager, you can have them, you know, sales specific reports. When you go in here to your profit and loss, and you want to save a certain, um, so like right now it's going year to date. If you constantly want to look at a profit and loss from the last month, if you go in and change the settings to whatever month you prefer and hit save customization, you can change the report name. You can add it to a certain uh, group of reports if you care, or you can also share it with other users. Um, let's say you just want to save it for yourself. You're not worried about saving it or sharing it with anybody else. If you come back here and go over to custom reports, you'll see here that the profit and loss for the date range of last month has been saved. Um, I know a lot of, um, I primarily work with small business owners. Um, a lot of our small business owners do work with this. Um, the standard report menu just gets very overwhelming. And, you know, there's a hundred reports out there and they only look at three. So they kind of like to do this. Uh, moving over into our management reports now, uh, this is where I wanted to spend the majority of my time today. Um, I know a lot of nonprofits and governments, you know, you guys have a lot of uh, monthly meetings and need some treasury reports. And this here is a fantastic feature from QuickBooks Online that will allow you to essentially generate your entire book of reports right here within the software. So as you can see here, they already have a couple of um, templates here that you can work with. I'm going to come out here and create new just to kind of show you the different features that they have. I'm going to create just a test. And as you can tell here, we start obviously with the cover page. There's different um, templates that you can use. If you have a company logo, you can add that for yourself as well. Um, multiple different forms and fashions of presenting the reports. Here you have um, all your specific information for the period ended 
the date it was prepared on. Uh, you could also put any disclaimers that you need to include. Um, and then over here on the left, you can see where, then you can go into your table of contents. You have preliminary pages. So let's say you wanted to add your board meeting or your um, meeting minutes from the prior month. You can just copy and paste them directly into here. Um, you can add multiple pages. Then we're gonna get down here into our reports. Um, what then you can do is you can come out here and select what report. So let's say we want the profit and loss to be the first report that we show. You can customize the report title. You can also select the month uh, or the time period. So we'll just do uh, last month. We'll say that we're preparing our board meeting uh, reports for the month of January or the month of June. Um, so we're going to save this. And then we can go in and we can add a new report. And let's say now we wanna do a check detail report. Um, again, for the prior month, that way the board members can see all of the um, checks that we wrote last month. And then you can come down here and you can put any end notes. Uh, so if you have any additional like outside reports, if you, you know, what, whatever end of month meeting uh, notes you generally enter, you can enter all that information in here. Now you can see if we go over here to our table of contents, it lists the different reports that we have. Uh, so I think that this is kind of a very neat feature. Um, you can also, again, go in here and customize it in whatever way you prefer. And then obviously we can preview it and print and send it to whomever we care to send it to. Uh, so as I said before, reporting was kind of a uh, deterrent of QuickBooks Online. However, it has come a long way. And I think that this is just an incredible feature. Um, it could be a big time saver. You're no longer exporting. Um, it will automatically generate with whatever parameters you ask it to.